hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so today we are again going to resume our discussion on sensors transducers and instrumentation now uh, there are already around uh, 10 to 15 videos uh, on uh, this topic uh, of sensors transducers and instrumentation so today uh, we are going to discuss about a new type of sensor or uh, a specific uh, sensor which which is based on a particular electrical property so today we are going to discuss about uh, inductive sensors okay so by the name itself we can uh, understand that uh, the electrical property which uh, comes into play here is inductance okay okay so inductance is the electrical property which uh, opposes any change in the rate of flow of current okay through a uh, electrical element so that property comes into play so this inductive sensor okay these uh, this family of sensors which is based on the property of inductance okay change of inductance it is used to uh, measure various physical parameters mostly uh, force pressure uh, torque displacement speed okay these physical parameters are used to measure using inductance sensor and uh, all of these physical parameters are converted into change of inductance so the input is any physical parameter be it displacement speed force torque etc and the output is a change in inductance so here the physical parameter of interest is first converted in into any angular or linear motion and then that is converted into a suitable voltage or current signal okay so this linear or rotational motion is uh, converted into a change in inductance and then that change in inductance is converted into a suitable voltage or current signal using signal conditioning techniques mostly AC bridges okay inductance bridges are used okay we will discuss about that so the inductance sensor which is uh, generally used it consists of three parts okay a ferromagnetic core okay let's see this this is a typical design of a of an inductance sensor so it consists of a ferromagnetic core this she shaped uh, element with a number of turns of coil wound over it which is supplied from a voltage source then it has a ferromagnetic armature which is the movable element okay this is the mobile element of this device so whatever physical parameter of interest which we want to measure it is applied on this movable element okay and in between the ferromagnetic core and armature there exists an air gap now this air gap is the most important factor in this inductance sensor why we will get to know that so it consists of three main parts ferromagnetic core with a number of turns of coil wound over it supplied from a voltage source a ferromagnetic armature which is movable and the air gap okay so before we uh, go into understanding the working principle first we must uh, have a understanding of reluctance because it will come into play here so reluctance is uh, the property of a magnetic circuit which opposes any change in the sorry uh, which opposes the flow of magnetic flux lines okay so reluctance opposes the flow of magnetic flux through a material so the reluctance uh, of any material is given by the formula L by mu0 mu r into A where L is the length of the flux path the magnetic flux path mu0 is the absolute 
permeability of the medium which is air and mu r is the relative permeability of the material specific material whose reluctance we are uh, talking about and then a is the area of the flux path so l is the length of the flux path mu zero is the absolute permeability mu r is the relative permeability and a is the area of the flux path so permeability of any material is the relative ease with which the magnetic flux lines they are uh, allowed to penetrate through that material okay so or the ease with which a material can be magnetized so the concept of reluctance comes into play in this uh, inductance sensor in this way so in this uh, inductance sensor the core air gap and armature the reluctance of these three parts will come into play so the total reluctance of this inductance sensor is given by the reluctance of the core the reluctance of the air gap and the reluctance of the armature both the uh, sorry the three elements the armature the armature the core and the air gap so we have uh, already uh, we know that the reluctance is given by l by mu zero mu r into a that is length divided by the product of the permeabilities of the absolute and the relative permeabilities and then the area of the flux path so for the core okay this core here this is the radius of this semicircular core the semitroid this is the radius capital r so this dotted lines which you see here through this semi uh, circular uh, core this is the flux path of this core so obviously it is the circumference of this semicircle so that will be pi r okay so here for the core the length of the flux path is pi r then the area of the flux path now the area of the flux path is this area of cross section of this semicircular element the area of cross section now the radius of cross section of this semicircular element this core is small r which is the radius of the cross section of this cross section so the area of the flux path will be simply pi r square the small r okay so here the reluctance of the core is length of the flux path which is pi r then the absolute and relative permeabilities mu zero mu c which is the permeability of the core mu subscript c is the permeability of the core then the area of the flux path is pi small r square so here pi pi both got cancelled out in the numerator and denominator so it becomes capital r by mu zero mu c into r square so again to avoid any confusion capital r is the radius of this semicircle okay the semicircle core from the center position and small r is the radius of cross section of this inner inner cross section that of this uh, uh, core the semicircular core again for the now the reluctance of the air gap okay which is the most important factor here so the reluctance of the air gap that is given by 2d by mu zero pi r square okay so here this is the gap in between the armature and this semicircular core d okay and uh, this is twice of that distance which is the length of the flux path involving air in the space in between the core and the armature and uh, the cross sectional area of this flux path in free space okay involving this okay not this space just the space separating the core and armature the cross sectional area is same as the cross sectional area of this core okay so the reluctance of the air gap is 2d by 
mu zero pi r square. Only mu zero comes into play because for free space the absolute permeability is there only no relative permeability so the reluctance of the air gap is 2d by mu 0 pi r square okay twice this distance two times this distance is covered and the area of cross section of this free space the space separating this core and armature only this portion and this portion is same as the cross sectional area of this core so 2d by pi r square now the armature okay so the reluctance of the armature is again length of the armature by area so here it is 2r by mu 0 mu a 2r t mu 0 absolute permeability mu a is the armature permeability 2r is the length of the flux path see this is the radius from the center point to this so this is twice the length of the armature is twice this radius so 2r this much from here to here r again from here to here r so 2r and uh, the t here okay the t in the armature here is the thickness of the armature okay the thickness of the armature so the armature reluctance is r by mu 0 mu a by rt 2 got cancelled out from both the numerator and the denominator okay so now if we look closely at the expressions of core reluctance air gap reluctance and the armature reluctance in the core reluctance both these things are mu 0 mu c and the small r capital r small r mu zero mu c they are all constant they cannot change okay the radius of cross section of the core the distance the center distance the radius from the center of the semicircular core capital r that is constant and mu zero and mu c core permeability absolute permeability are constant so the reluctance of the core is fixed again for the armature the armature reluctance again this capital r is fixed mu zero is fixed mu a is fixed radius of cross section of the core is fixed and the thickness of the armature that is also fixed so again the armature reluctance is fixed so i said that the reluctance of the air gap that is the most important factor here so the separation between the armature and the score this gap the air gap is the most important factor here which contributes to a change in the reluctance of the air gap and hence the total reluctance okay this air gap reluctance change contributes to a change in the total reluctance so i already said that the armature is movable it is connected to the source of physical parameter which results in a movement of this armature causing a change in the length of the air gap so the uh, the air gap reluctance which is 2d by mu 0 pi r square this change in d causes a change in the reluctance of the air gap so how this reluctance is uh, converted into suitable change in voltage let's see so there is a relationship between reluctance and inductance okay now i have already discussed this in the uh, electrical machine section but here again i will discuss it that uh, in a magnetic circuit a magnetomotive force drives a flux through the circuit reluctance it is similar to in electrical circuit an electromotive force drives a current through a resistance here a magnetomotive force drives flux through reluctance so mmf is given by phi into r okay magnetic flux and reluctance r also this magnetomotive force is given by ni where n is this number of turns of coil and i is the current flowing through each turn okay so mmf is also equal to ni so if we equate these two equations we'll get ni is equal to phi r or phi is equal to ni by r okay the flux associated with each turn of coil now the total flux 
okay the total flux associated with this n terms of coil okay the n terms of coil it is given by n phi okay which is equal to n square i by r okay it is the total flux now we know that uh, inductance is given by total flux divided by current i that is the formula of inductance self inductance again this is all related to network theory or circuit theory so the self inductance is given by total flux by current flowing through uh, through each term so it is equal to n square by r so this is an important equation relating self inductance or inductance and reluctance so inductance is inversely proportional to reluctance so here in this case the inductive sensor the inductance of the sensor is equal to n by i which is equal to n square by total reluctance r total so in this inductive sensor this armature is connected to the physical parameter be it force or pressure or speed displacement whatever because of that this armature the movable armature it moves to and fro away or towards this core causing a change in the air gap so this change in the air gap causes a change in the air gap reluctance as per this formula 2d by mu0 pi r square this change in the reluctance of the air gap causes a change in the total reluctance this total reluctance changes because of change in the air gap reluctance the other two reluctances are constant they they cannot be changed so because of that there is a change in the inductance of this sensor as per this formula n square by r total now how this inductance is converted into voltage through the help of proper signal conditioning with the help of ac bridges inductance involving inductances so any ac bridge can be used so this inductive sensing element is uh, connected as one arm of this uh, ac bridge which converts it into a suitable voltage change which is uh, generally of uh, low magnitude so it is uh, amplified with the help of a voltage amplifier to give us a voltage output so this is the whole operation of this inductance sensor okay so first the physical parameter of interest is uh, fed to this movable armature which causes a change in the air gap distance this change in air gap distance causes a change in the air gap reluctance so this air gap reluctance change causes a change in the total reluctance and this total reluctance change causes a change in the sensor inductance now so this inductance again is converted into suitable voltage change with the help of ac bridge so this is the whole operation of the inductance sensor so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation communication engineering have a great day thank you very much